how to pray. An emergency prayer of just calling out to the Lord is, is uh, it, it does the trick. <laughs> but it is good to have a structure that you can fall back upon. If you just remember the word part, P-A-R-T, part, it's really easy, right? Okay. When we do our part, God does his part. We can't expect God to do everything. We have to do our part, and, and he always does his part. And when we do our part, they come together, see? And then it's like an electrical connection. When if here's God and we want to get connected, we can't stay over here. We have to get over there. <laughs> so we have to do our part and connect to his part. <laughs> and then the electricity can flow and his, his life and his um, light can enter into our lives and do his magic. So, and really his magic is just called life. It is life. It's the most powerful force in the world because we are alive because of him, okay? Him, her, it, whatever you want to call that force, the life force. So in the word part, if we remember the word part, P-A-R-T, each letter stands for something. And the first letter is P. Praise. Praise. Lift up your heart to God and, and praise him for who he is. Lifting up our heart and remembering that God is worthy of being praised will help us remember that we are not the, the big power here now. <laughs> that we are not the one that has the power. If we praise God and say, God, thank you that you created all things and that you are the one who really has all power. And from the beginning, you created us. And so thank you, God, that you're in charge and I'm not. <laughs> so there are a lot of things we can praise him for. And, and a lot of times, um, everybody has their own way of praising the Lord. But lifting up our hearts to praise God brings us up a little bit higher to recognize what's really important. And that it's not all us. Because when we get upset or when we get when we, we get down, it's because our minds are down. We're forgetting that there's that we're not in charge anyway. <laughs> and then that leads us to the second letter, A. Remember P-A-R-T. The second letter, A, represents admit. Admit that you're powerless. Admit that you can't do anything really without God's help, that you can't do it alone. How many of us struggle because we want to do, we want to do it all ourselves. We think somehow that we're the only one that has to do everything. <laughs> or we think that we are in charge. And there's another, you know, error in our thinking. Because really, no matter what we try to make happen, if nature doesn't cooperate with us, it's not going to work. <laughs> and so we have to admit that we don't know everything and that we are helpless without divine help. So we have P-A-R. R is the next one. R stands for request. Now, after we've praised the Lord and recognized him for his power, his almighty strength to help in time of need, 
and A, and we've admitted that we can't do it without him, then R, then we can request, then we can ask. We've, we can bring our requests before God, knowing that he is the only one who really can help us and is the life force within us to make things happen and to guide us what to do. Request whatever you need. Now, people are so afraid to request sometimes because they think, well, either I won't get it or, or they think, well, what if I'm not supposed to have it? Are you asking for anything that's against the law? Are you doing anything that's going to hurt somebody? Are you asking for something that is going to hurt you? If that's not the case, then ask. Okay. Um, maybe you're asking for enough supply. Like, God, I need more money. Oh, God, please, please, please give me some more money. There's nothing wrong with that. Because if you need something, God said, I will supply your needs according to my riches, not according to your empty pocketbook. God promised he would supply our needs because he's, he owns everything. There's an old saying, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Well, what that really means is that he owns it all. Okay, why? Because life is our supply. Life, and as long as we're alive, alive we have life in us, right? And so we can draw upon that source of life. So, P-A-R-T. So, P, praise, A, admit, R, request. Ask for whatever you need. And don't be afraid to ask. And then T means thank. Once you ask for something, then you thank him for what he's about to do. You thank him in the expectation that he will answer your prayer. And that's as simple as it gets. P-A-R-T. Praise. Admit that you're powerless without him. R. Request for what you need. And T. Thank him for what he's going to do. You can thank him in advance for whatever he's going to do and trusting he will do something. He will do something. Now, sometimes we ask for something and we, we don't know how to ask correctly because, or we don't know what to ask for. So we can always ask for guidance. We can always ask for thy will to be done. And in confidence, knowing that God's will is always for our good. God does not want bad things for his children. We are sometimes so afraid that we are not supposed to get something good. And why is that? Maybe because of early childhood experiences, you know, the ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. The ACEs in our life make us feel like sometimes that, oh my gosh, not only are we not going to get what we want, but we will sometimes get what we don't want and we'll be punished for wanting something or punished and hurt. And that that's what we can expect because our earthly parents treated us wrong or other people in our families treated us wrong, but they are not God. And God always has our best interest at heart. So we don't have to be afraid of asking and expecting good. What we need is trust. We need to learn to trust God. Is your trust muscle broken or out of shape? Trusting 
is extremely important, but it's not the act of trusting, it's who are you trusting? Because <laughs> we know we can trust God. Now that's the thing. People misunderstand God's will. They misunderstand God's intentions uh, for people's intentions. They misunderstand what God wants. But I finally realized that my understanding of God, I always thought he was waiting up with like with a big hammer up in heaven to squash me any minute that he felt like it or I was wrong or whatever. Um, and so I was afraid and, and yet I didn't understand. I also felt like he was a loving God, but I had this confusion. So it wasn't until I finally gave, gave in to my own, uh, to, to God and understood that he really does love me that I, uh, and wanted my best, see? And then therein lies another conflict. Our self-will versus our higher will, because our higher will always wants what's best. God, God's will always can see what will really be good for us. And what, and what does that mean? When we're little kids, we said, I want the candy, 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 candy. I want the candy. And your mother says, no, you must eat your vegetables and your whatever it is else you have to eat. You have to eat your dinner first. And you go, me, who wants the dinner? I want the, veg I want the, the candy. So, but your mother knows best. <laughs> and your father knows best. Because they want you to be healthy. They don't want you to be sick. And so, a lot of times our childish will wants, opposes what God wants. <laughs> and we have to be able to, you know, realize that, hmm, well, in the long run, I guess I'll be healthier. And so, Submitting to God's will is actually a, a wonderful thing because it'll open the door to your greatest happiness. Well, I want you to bring up your issues that you're facing. And I have another one that we're going to bring up next time. The next topic I'm going to cover is the fact that if we are trying too hard to make things happen. Sometimes our good deed doism gets in the way. I know that all of you are all of you are probably people who really care about others, and that's why you're here. I mean, my goodness, life is. You are precious, and you're so loving and giving. And, and the biggest problem, okay, let me get back to my topic. The topic is when we try to help people against their will. <laughs> I didn't want to say it because I'm guilty of that. I, I was so guilty of that for years. I wanted to help people against their will, whether they like it or not. <laughs> And my kids and everybody, and 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 ended up okay. But so that's the next topic that we're going to go over, unless you have another one. And if you have another topic that's more important, like if you're really struggling with something and you want to be able to, uh, you know, get, you want to be able to to help them, but they're just refusing to be helped. Well, then what do you do? that that's what we're going to go over so okay <laughs>